In this session, you are going to see how to create a Star Wars tactical display on a mini OLED. First, by looking at the specifications, how to wire it to an Arduino, how to set up the driver library in the Arduino IDE, and finally, a walkthrough of the code that creates the Star Wars tactical display. Let's get started. This is the display I bought on Amazon. I've put the link in the video description. It's made by Waveshare. The size is 1.2 inch. It's a LCD that can display up to 65,000 colors. And the size of the display is 240 by 240 pixels. It's compatible with the Raspberry Pi and other microcontrollers, but I am going to use it with an Arduino to make the Star Wars tactical display. The device comes with unborn memory, so it does not took up any memory on your Arduino, and it's a good thing. Compared, for example, with a solid display, which is more common. This display has no memory at all. It creates a 1K buffer of dynamic memory on your Arduino. And the dynamic memory on an Arduino is only 2K, so it leaves you with 1K, 1000 byte, which can be a problem for some projects. And it has been for me when I built my neutron star detector. I crashed the Arduino many times because of a shortage of dynamic memory. So using a display like this one, which requires no memory on your Arduino, is very good. Because it leaves a lot of free space to play with the display. Wiring the display is very easy. All the pins are well identified at the back of the display. It comes with the small GST connectors with all the wires you need to plug it on the Arduino. So you first insert the connector into the housing at the back of the display like this. Push it a little bit so it is inserted completely. Now I am going to use an Arduino Nano for this project, but the wiring is exactly the same for an Arduino Uno, including the pin numbers. Here is a diagram for each wire of the display and the corresponding pin on the Arduino. Pause the video and take your time to wire it on your side. This is the completed wiring for the Nano. You don't need anything else to make it working. Now if you're going to use an Arduino Uno for this project, you will see that the cable provided with the display is not compatible with the Uno. In that case, use a simple DuPont wire that you use for prototyping and connect one end of the DuPont wire to the end of the cable connector. Do this for each wire of the display and you will be able to connect them to your Arduino Uno. Now let's see how you can use the display with Arduino. WaveShare provides a program to use the display on an Arduino. I have tried it and it works fine, but I prefer to use the Adafruit GFX functions to draw on a display. It's more standard and if you have another display, you could use my code almost without any changes. The Adafruit GFX functions are widely used and easy to understand. Now we need to use this open source library, which is a GFX library made for the WaveShare display. I've put the link in the video description. Download the library by clicking the code button and choose the download zip in the menu. It will download a zip file in your download folder. Open your Arduino IDE, then open the sketch menu and choose include library, then add zip library. Locate the zip file you just downloaded and click open. It will install the library and it's now ready to be used. Let's look at the code that creates the Star Wars tactical display. First, you need to make sure that you place the Arabesh header file in the same folder where your sketch is saved. Again, you can download the code. The link is in the video description. I will guide you through the code by first showing you the main functions before looking at functions that do the inner workings for making the actual tactical display. And I have set up a webcam so you can see live what the code is actually doing on the display. First, in the setup function, we need to set the font, the Arabesh font. After that, we set 
the size of the font to one and it's important to set it at one because the arabesque font is already sized for displaying at an eight point size on the display. We initialize the display with the begin function. We clear the screen to a black screen, which is already what is shown on the webcam. And we need to set the rotation to zero, which is in fact no rotation on the display. We don't want the display to rotate. And this function is actually simulating the display, booting up and displaying the tactical display. So let's upload it and see what it does. So the boot tactical display function is actually uh, drawing the main tactical display. So we see a circle, quadrants, arcs that are drawn on the display objects in white that has been detected some faint object we nurture if they are detected or not and in this quadrant we're displaying orabesh characters once the setup function has finished executing and the actual tactical display is showing what we are doing in the main loop is do some animation on the tactical display so we have five functions that are doing animation. And the first function is called blink objects. So what the function does is choose randomly one to three objects to blink at random colors. So this choose the objects to be randomly blinked. The blinking will go from white to a random color for 5,000 milliseconds, which is five seconds, at a speed of 700 milliseconds. So if we upload the code to see what it does exactly. So the display is booting. And we see objects blinking, white objects here that are blinking from red to white. And now we have three objects blinking from green to white so every time in the loop function it's choosing random objects to be blinked now the second function is called blink arc and what it does is choose a random arc that we see here in light blue choose a random arc and makes one of them blink so it will blink uh, from color blue to a random color again for uh, five seconds at an interval of 700 milliseconds so let's comment out this one so that we see only the blink arc uh, function doing its job so let's upload the code and you see the arc blinking from red to blue. And after five seconds, another arc is chosen randomly. And this one is in green. Now the next function is called blink tactical text. And what it does is simply showing the alert word in that quadrant and make it blink for 10,000 milliseconds which is 10 seconds from uh, in red from a low intensity to a high intensity so let's upload the code and you see the alert in orobesh displayed in this quadrant and flashing in red so you don't see it very well uh, because of the resolution of the webcam but it's actually uh, nicely displayed from a low intensity in red to a high intensity. And the next function following the blink tactical text is just writing again uh, the same text that we saw in our range when the screen is, uh, is booted up. So if we execute it, we will see that after blinking the, the alert in red, it will write again 
the orange text in the same quadrant. So it's, it's kind of restoring the text that was there before the alert was showing. So the alert is blinking for 10 seconds. And after that, writing the, the orange text, restoring it. Now what the last function is doing, the blink radar on function is just make the uh, the orange character this one blinking uh, at a 200 millisecond interval for five seconds. So let's upload it. So the text is blinking. Now we can make all the other function executing in the loop, in the main loop functions. So what it does is simply uh, doing the animation for each of the functions, blinking random objects, white objects at the top, blinking an arc, followed by blinking the tactical alert word, restoring this text and blinking it. So let's upload the code. And we will see all the animation um so the blinking of objects after that the blinking of arc after that the blinking of the other text finally the blinking of the radar on in that quadrant and it's repeating again the same sequences over and over since we are in the main loop. Now these are the main functions. So it's all you need to know if you just want to reuse the code for your own projects. Now, if we look into the detail functions, so in the sequences section, you have all the main functions that are uh, used in the setup and the main loop functions. So the boot tactical display function, the blink radar on, right radar on, the blink object, the blink arc, the blink tactical text. And after that, uh, I've created some geometry functions. So to draw a line at an angle, because these functions are not available uh, right out of the box in the Adafruit GFX library. So I have to create them. So this dry line at angle is just drawing line on the screen at an angle specified in degrees. Um, this one is actually drawing a rectangle at an angle in degrees. So you see these little re rectangle in white are drawn at angle. Um, I have a function to draw an arc uh, from uh, starting at a degree and ending at a degree. So for example, from 10 degrees to 90 degree. So it's, it's actually drawing arcs. And in data fruit, you just only have a draw circle function. You cannot draw arc. So with this function, you can, you can actually draw arc. And these functions are for clearing the screen, displaying Orobesh st string on the, the display, some RGB functions to work with the RGB colors, the duration functions to help having sequences executed for a specified time. And if we look at the top of the file, um what is important the include here so these one are necessary these three ones are necessary to use the display so spih and the adafruit gfx are standard library this one we downloaded first from the open source uh, website and this one is the Orobesh header file that is provided uh, on my website. Uh, 
This is the only two pins that we need to define in our code, the DC and CS pin. And the other pins are defined actually in this header file. And the rest are just details. So coordinate for displaying the arcs, coordinate for displaying the lines at an angle, uh, all the coordinates for creating the the objects in white, which I call the detected objects, the undetected objects, which are the faint blue objects here. So that's it. Let me know in the comments if you found this session useful. And if you got any problems using my code to make your own Star Wars tactical display, let me know and I will help you. Thanks for watching.